Okay, now it's time to add texture using an image that we make into a mask. So if you can see here on Big Thunder, we actually have this raster texture medium turned on. If we turn that off, you can see what it is affecting. You can see there's a bunch of texture being added there. We can make different levels of texture. I also have this light texture, which has a lot less in it. And then just the raster texture itself, which is very heavy. So depending on what the look that you're going for, you can have different ones. I chose to go with a medium size texture on this one. Okay, jump back to our castle poster and we want to go ahead and get a texture from online. So I went to freestocktextures.com and I just searched for paper and I chose this old paper blank page texture and we're going to try that and see how it goes. So I just downloaded that and it's in my downloads. So I'll just go ahead and grab that and drag it in. And it looks like it dragged it in where it was, so right above the base vectors. But we're just going to go ahead and pull that up to the top. And we want to always have a copy, so let's duplicate that. Right click and choose duplicate. And we'll work on this other one, turning off the one beneath. Let's give it a name. Original texture. And then texture for now. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is actually apply an effect to this texture. So we want to add an adjustment layer, and this is where it gets really powerful that we have all the tools of photo available to us as well as having the brushes, we can also add adjustment layers. We're looking for our threshold adjustment layer. Okay, and this is going to change our image to black and white and allow us to adjust the threshold for what is black and white. So we can drag the threshold and it becomes more white or drag it up and it becomes more black. So we want a fair amount of texture but not too much. What I found is that normally more comes out than what you see in this mode so I'm going to try about 58 percent for now. And then going back to our layers panel we're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate it again because we want to save that one before we change this one to a mask. So let's drag this down to our base vectors and then we'll right click on it and we'll choose rasterize to mask. And we need to turn off our top one so that we aren't seeing that anymore. And now we can see the mask underneath. So if we turn it off and back on again we can see where it's coming from. And you can see this is mostly showing up in the clouds. It's showing through our base rectangle just like it was before. And so there's a couple different things that we can do with this. First one is we can always rotate it or expand it to see different ways of looking at it. So you can see the texture moves around as we do that. And if we make it bigger, we make the texture bigger. And that adjusts what it looks like as well. So you can just make adjustments as you go. The other thing we can do is we can actually try and mask different parts of the layer. So we go ahead and duplicate this mask. And then if I come and I actually take my foreground brush and I make this a mask on the foreground brush, then if I move that texture, we can get different types of texture here as well. And the nice thing about applying to an individual vector shape like that is that you will be able to see what is behind that vector shape. So if there's different colors like the blue here, you can see that that is coming through in this shape where it should be. So that can be fun and give it more of a real appeal there because you would expect that that ink was actually behind there and would show through like that. Okay, so we can make a bunch of different adjustments with our texture and we can choose different amounts to have on each one. So I'm going to go ahead and grabbing my still live layer, I'm going to call this live texture. I can adjust the threshold again. And as I adjust the threshold, I can bring more in or out. So I'm going to bring in more on this one. And then, of course, duplicate it. I'm going to call this one text texture. I'm going to drag it in to my text group, turn off my live texture, and then we're going to rasterize it to a mask.
and that then will apply texture just to our text. So you can see we can turn that off and on. And that gives our text a more real feeling. There. You can see as I zoom in, I'm actually seeing a lot more texture here. So one of the things is as you add more and more raster graphics, your computer has to work harder and harder to render them. And so some things might not show at certain zoom levels. So I actually feel like the texture on my bushes is getting really heavy. There are two textures going on on it, so I want to thin that out a little bit. So selecting my texture mask, we can do just what we did before with our brush. And we can actually come and we can paint out some of that texture. Remember, we want to be on white. When we're on the mask. We can paint some of that out. And then we can go to the texture that we applied just to that foreground bush. And we can paint out a little bit of that too. It's nice to do this with a textured brush so that it still looks a little textury when you're painting it. And we'll try painting out some of this as well. We just don't want to have quite this much texture going on here. Now one place you can see that you can't really see texture is the pink of the castle. So we're going to want to go ahead and apply another texture layer just to that. Of course, this is all very subjective what you choose to do here. It's really up to you. If you ever want to see the mask, you can just option click on it and you'll see the whole mask. All right, so let's go ahead and let's apply another one of our textures to our castle. I'm going to grab my texture and duplicate it. And then we're going to go and we're just going to apply it just to the castle. We can rotate it. You can see the white coming through from the clouds behind. That's not bad. Okay, so now let's look at the text. Let's see how much we have going on on the text quite a bit there. Okay, our date didn't get into our text group, so let's drag that down. And now we have more there. Let's grab our brush tool, and we'll brush out a little bit of this so there isn't quite so much going on. Make our brush smaller. Okay. Come up here and we'll brush and we'll brush. We'll brush over some of this so that it's not quite so textury. Alright, so that's how we'd go about adding raster textures to our document. 
this is kind of the final step on our way to a finished document. And remember, you can have different types of textures. You could even combine brush and non-brush textures together. You can add in as many different, we've only used one type of texture, but you could have different images that make up the texture of your document. There's a lot of different things you can do. There's different ways you can add a texture as a mask, but I really like the threshold adjustment layer. That one just seems to work really well for me. And so that's basically going to wrap up creating the poster. You can, of course, tinker with the texture as much as you want. I think I'm happy with where mine is at. I'm going to switch back to Publisher Persona. Go ahead and hit Command 1, which will give me a 1 to 1 or as close to a 1 to 1 as it can do on this screen. And I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty much the way that I want it. The only thing that looks like I might be missing is some texture in this other pink area. I don't think that's looking too bad. So I think we're going to go with this for now. In the next video, we're going to talk about exporting the poster as a PDF or as a JPEG so that you can take it different places.